All right, welcome back to Do Your Damn Self. Today we have a Murray 21 inch Briggs and Stratton 500 series mower. Um, these are good mowers. My friend has left the fuel in there all season long, all the winter time, and I'm afraid it has gelled in the lines. I've drained the fuel already. It's about the color of Wesson oil, which I'm not crazy about, but isn't horrible. But it also has some solids in the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's some water spots and some solids floating around. That is not necessarily a good thing to see, so I'm afraid that has clogged up the carburetor. So, first thing I'm going to do, after I've drained the gasoline, just let that dry, put some fresh gasoline in there, spray the carburetor out with gum out carb cleaner, or any other carb cleaner you have. Um, let it sit a while, Put some fresh fuel in there, see what happens. Worst thing that will happen is it'll not start. I'm not going to put much in here. This is much more clean and white looking than the fuel that I took out of there. Hopefully just some fresh gas and uh, a little TLC will do the job. Before I try to start it, I'm going to check the spark plug to see if it's clogged up and the oil over here. Oil is registering on the stick. It does not look terribly dirty, but not terribly clean either. After I get this thing going, we're going to uh, change the oil out before we just let it go for the season here. So that looks pretty decent. Taking the spark plug out to look at it. All right, this is a 5 8 inch wrench. That spark plug looks clean. I don't see a thing wrong with it. I'm going to try to take a little bit of that carb cleaner and spray it off. If there's any water on this at all, it will not spark well. So make sure this is dry and clean. Carb cleaner is wonderful for this. Do not get it in your eyes. It'll hurt very badly. Feel free to wear gloves or any kind of safety device you might want to use. It won't take much at all. Okay, let that dry. It just smells like, clean, like gasoline in there, so I don't see a big problem with it. I'm going to put a little bit in the carburetor. Also, stand back and let it, don't get it in your eyes. Let that settle and then drain it by tipping it this way. Be careful not to cross thread it. If it doesn't go in easily, pull it out and start again. Okay, look at the connection. It all looks clean and free of corrosion in there, so I don't see a problem there. Make sure you're on there tight. Give it a click, that's what you want. Well, replace the air filter if needed. This one hasn't really seen any wear at all, so it's fine to use. It's a good idea to change these every season or so, but just make sure they're free of dust, like, like you see here. Pull back on there. And we'll get it down off of here see what she'll do all right I probably shouldn't have to say it but I will anyway do not try to pull this cord while it's sitting on the table it could be very dangerous make sure you're on the ground on a level surface nothing underneath there to get caught up in the blade prime it a few times and let's see what happens
Okay, after spraying the carb cleaner and the carburetor, it wanted to start. The only reason it didn't keep going is it's not getting gas. So that tells me this is a carburetor problem. We're going to have to take this carb off, clean it out, and uh, find the jets in there. All right, this cover for the carburetor is held on by three bolts on the inside, one bolt here. Ones on the inside are seven millimeter, ones on the outside are eight millimeter. Have somewhere to put these so they won't roll away, get in the grass. Trust me, you don't want to look for them down there. So let's take this off to see how it looks in there. So correction, one of the bolts on the inside is an eight, as well as this one right here. Things just can't be simple anymore, can they? Yeah. This is going to get dirty. You're going to get some fuel on your hands. If you like, wear some rubber gloves. Keep the fuel off your hands. I may run and get some myself. All right, so this is what the cover looks like when it's pulled off. This is your prime ball. Make sure that is in good shape and not cracked. All right, here is our carburetor. It is wide open. I'm going to have to take some of this off to be able to see what I'm doing in here, but this is the bowl that we're worried about. I may just drain this right here. There is a Allen hole, Allen wrench hole on the bottom of this thing. I have to go get my wrenches, go get some rubber gloves, and see if we can't drain that, chase some of the water out of there. All right, I got my Allen wrenches out, but there is no room up under here between the mower and the carburetor to get the wrench in there to take that off while this is on there. So I have to pop this off. It is a eight millimeter bolt. Set that out of the way. Make sure this turns pretty freely. What's happening is the stop bar is squeezing that. It turn loose, it turns pretty free. Don't cycle it. The gas engine, it might start while this is up here. It'll be a very bad thing. So this is turning free. It sounds good. I didn't hear any squeaking or grinding or anything. So, and the stop bar is doing what it's supposed to do, grounding it and stopping the motor from turning. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. We need to get this off. We'll have to drain the fuel out of the tank we just put in there and take the fuel line off the carburetor. All right, so when you take this carburetor off, Going to have to have somewhere to put it's going to be nasty and have a lot of old fuel and water and whatever else so use something that you can throw away if you need but uh, do not get it in your eyes i'm wearing rubber gloves feel free to do these or not but be sure to wash your hands afterwards so really the only thing holding it on 
is just it's sitting on there just basically just pushed on when I reattach it I'll put a little plumber's grease around there to help seal that so it makes a better seal on there that could be an issue is getting air in the sides of the carburetor so really the only thing holding it on there is the clip going to the accelerator on the top here and the fuel line what I'm going to do is take the fuel line clips loose just standard pliers pull it back it will just pull off of there pull it out it's a little awkward take the fuel line off without breaking the plastic on the carburetor these things are just plastic these days I both love and hate that really and we need to use our recycled plastics but I way prefer metal it lasts much longer on there for a while we have to just pry it loose don't cut the line And there will be some gasoline in there, so it will make a mess. All right, this is the carburetor. Doesn't look like much. They're only about 35 bucks on Amazon if you had to replace it. That may be what we end up doing here. We'll see. Dump the fuel out. It's in there. This is, of course, flammable. And it should be done in a very well ventilated area. All right, here is that Allen screw nut I was telling you about. Nine millimeter Allen screw it comes right off. Good bit of yeah, some of the kind of gelling that I saw in the fuel. Little basically look like little tapioca pudding bits on there. So I'm gonna open this up, we'll spray that out. Be careful, there are things in here that will get lost there are springs and needles you need to be very careful of so careful all right seven millimeters the size of the socket I'm using for this part there will be an o-ring on here it may be torn they are cheap to replace. The gas that came out of there is pretty yellow looking. All right, so here is your float. What happens is the bowl, which is this, fills up with gasoline. The float just it does exactly what it says it floats up and that shuts off the gas going to the carburetor and when it drains down enough it, the gravity fed gas tank will put more in there and feed it and it'll just keep on going if it's a healthy carburetor it will just keep on going so what we're going to do spray out everything in here then clean it dry it and hopefully we won't have to rejet right there but uh, I'm going to there's a little hole right there I'm gonna take a little needle poke it in there to make sure that it is clear that could be a, a major problem this is the jet for the carburetor actually that's the suction for the jet that goes to the carburetor so if there's any gel in there that will have clogged up the jet going to the carburetor so spray all of this out
spraying that into the garbage can to make sure it didn't kill my grass, because it will. Alright, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to get my needle probe, put it in there, Let's see if I can't clear that out. Alright, just been on the safe side, I'm going to take this float off. This pin right here is what holds that in place. Carefully take that out just by sliding it out and setting it here. What's going to happen is this float is going to come off. What's going to come off with it is the needle that goes in there. That has to be clear too, so I want to make sure that's clear. Put this over something while you're doing this in case you drop anything, it will fall onto the tray or a towel or a blanket on the ground or something to catch it. You don't want this thing to get onto the grass and just get lost because it will. It's tiny. Right, I'm putting a rug down on the ground underneath it just in case it does fall. Never hurts to be overly prepared. All right, sliding the pin out. This is the float, this is the needle I was talking about. This little guy right there, make sure it is clean and free of gunk. Don't lose this. All right. A little brass fitting in there is what we need to make sure is clean and free of obstructions. This is the needle probe I was talking about. You can get these things in kits of hooks and probes and things like that just at the, at the, at the hardware store or the automotive store. Not too expensive. If you're going to do a lot of this kind of work, it really helps to have these. The top of that see little nail head slides into that slot right there, just like that, and it dangles. Make sure this goes back in that hole that we just cleaned out. Like so. pin that you didn't drop on the ground, back where it goes. It may take some work to get it in there. Let's go slow. Just like that. Okay, make sure all of your rubber fittings and the gaskets are clean, no dirt on them. I'm not going to put any silicone on that gasket because it has got to do with the fuel section and I don't want any kind, any kind of things to gel inside the lines in there. O-ring looks pretty good. I don't see any cracks or gaps in the O-ring that goes around that. So we're just going to put this back on here. There's only one way it goes on there right. 
see the nozzle on this thing. I'm about to clean it out here. That nozzle creates a spout shape. This square on here, see that? Goes right over that. That's why it's there, and it's there to give that some space there. That this is what sucks the fuel in. This is the lowest part of the fuel bowl on this thing. That's why it does what it does. Gasoline goes in there, and that's the lowest part. So only when it runs completely out of gas will this thing shut off. Right over the top of it. Careful, don't pinch your O rings. Clean the O-ring on your plug back off before you reassemble this thing. I've actually forgot to put this back on one time. Went to put fuel in my carburetor and it just all just drained out of there. Needless to say, I didn't do that again. It doesn't go on hard. It just goes on and does a really small turn to lock it in place. Don't crank it down, don't do a full turn. All right, so that is it just need to put our bolts back on here. I can't stress enough. Do not pinch your O-ring in there. It will get it will tear really easily. And if you don't create a good seal there, you'll leak, and it will not work properly. These don't need to be really tight. It's all plastic parts. Seven millimeter, not the eight. <laughs> All right, so this right here needs to be very clean. And what it's going to do is it's going to go on a little stem right here. There are O rings on there. The O rings fit up inside here. What I'm going to do is put a little plumber's grease on those O rings. It has nothing to do with the fuel, it's only to do with air. So putting a little silicone grease on there won't be a problem. If you've seen my plumbing video, you'll know I love this stuff. It comes in so handy. Don't get any in the carburetor, just get it around that stub. accelerator control it goes on this little guy right here this turns I don't know if you can see it or not but it's your choke get that into the hole All the way on, seated right. Reattach your fuel line.
If this does not work, I can try to get all the way inside the carburetor, find the jets, and drill them out a little bit. Or being a $35 carburetor, I might just check on Amazon and see how much and see how there there is a uh, one available or not. There almost always is for these things. They're extremely popular engines. So I'm gonna reattach. This is reattached. That clamp is reattached. What we're going to do is put our facing back on here that really holds this in place. The main thing that holds the carburetor on to the mower itself are the bolts that go here and the bolts that go right there. It holds it all together nice and tight. All right, time to put this plate back on. This hole right here is where the EGR tube from the engine attaches to it. Just like a car, it reburns engine gases, makes the carburetor work more efficiently, gives you hot fuel fumes in there, uh, basically just like a car does. So that will go on here. This nub and this nub right here will go in these two holes. That lines everything up. This is the only thing that really holds the carburetor in place. This area right around here needs to be very, very clean. It's what presses up against this gasket right here. You need a nice seal there. So get your bolt ready. Make sure you have something underneath it to catch it because it's kind of unavoidable. I always drop a few bolts here and there. Don't get too frustrated if that happens. I don't put on it all the bolts in all the way until I get everything in place just to make a nice even seal you don't want anything to get impinged you want everything to go on there nice and even so get your bolts in there get started it'll hold everything in place don't cinch it all the way down just just this side of hand tight. Want everything to line up. If it doesn't line up, you can always move it just a little bit before you cinch everything down. That's why I keep that tray right there. I did that just for you, by the way. Holes don't always line up just right, right away. That's why I leave everything just a little bit loose. Just move everything by hand to get it in place. All right, your full bolt, four bolts are in place. Go ahead and tighten everything down, just hand tight. Snug everything down. Don't get it too tight. These plastic parts will strip. Once you get everything just a little bit snug, that's really all you need. All right, everything is in place. What we need to do, just put the cover back on, put the cowl back on, make sure that is on there nice and tight so we can start this thing. All right, the cowl is back on. 
Everything's nice and snug. It is ready to try to start this thing. Fresh fuel is in here. I'm gonna put just a little bit of carb cleaner inside the carburetor to prime the thing. Hopefully, it will start up and keep running. We'll have to see. Press the primer ball. And if everything is cleared out enough, it will start. We'll see. Beautiful. Started up right away. The problem was apparently just a fuel issue inside the carburetor. Fuel gels when it gets cold. It forms those little bitty particles that we saw inside the gas over there. Also, it turns a weird color. You want it to be nice and clear. If it's yellowish, it's no good. Take it out of there. Clean everything out. So, put your tools away. Put the air filter back in place. Before I run this thing too much, I'm going to change the oil out, and this is ready to go back to its owner. So from do it your damn self, don't be afraid to do it your damn self, keep everything running. Love you guys.